Good morning. Uh, my name is Rana Zom, I'm product manager on Search, and uh, my team and I built the current top stories experience that you see on Google Search today. Um, and today I'll be talking a little bit about how we built the Google Search Viewer and how developers and other platforms can use our takeaways to build their own AMP-based consumption experiences. So how many of us are front-end developers here? Awesome. How many of you guys are front-end developers for platforms that are looking to build their own AMP-based experiences? Some people, some people. And how many of us already have AMP-based experiences on our platforms? Yes, amazing. All right, so let's get started. What makes an AMP-based consumption experience fast? Now, we actually know that AMP is already pretty fast, and so I'm gonna focus on the part that makes AMP instant, which is pre-rendering and the AMP viewer itself. What is an AMP viewer? The core parts that the AMP viewer really has to take care of is it has to talk to the cache. It has to transform an AMP URL that you get into a cache URL and get that AMP document back. And in our case, on search, it handles all of the pre-rendering magic that makes that page seem like it just appeared to the user. The three tenants that make this possible are format attributes, the pre-rendering mode of AMP, uh, the AMP cache itself, and our pre-rendering strategy. So, AMP pre-rendering mode. One part of AMP pre-rendering mode is its speed. It makes it much more achievable for a platform to pre-render because it takes only the few first viewport and the resources available in it and pre-renders that. This above the fold content is the only thing the user needs to see initially, so you can play this trick of loading the rest of the page when the user has actually decided to visit that page. Now, the way that AMP makes pre-rendering much more realistic of a prospect for platforms as compared with when you want to pre-render non-AMP pages is because of the way the format is set up. Um, the positions of the elements are totally inferable based on the AMP pages markup, so it's trivial to show just the ones that the users, uh, that is going to be above the fold. All right, so say a document typically has three, um, three large images. I like to call this document a study in catnaps. Um, only one of these documents is visible above the fold, and when you're in AMP pre-render mode, then the browser can download and pre-render three AMP documents using the bandwidth that would have been required to pre-render a single non-AMP document. The consequence of this is that as an app, you can pre-render way more aggressively um, AMP HTML documents than you could have pre-rendered regular HTML documents. The other portion, the other pillar of AMP pre-rendering mode is that it handles privacy and analytics in a smart way, so you don't have to deal with it. Um, it preserves user privacy uh, and analytics variants since no third-party JavaScript can be executed at this time. Now, on the user side, you don't want to send their data to the publisher without them having actually viewed the document. Um, and on the publisher side, they don't want to know that you pre-rendered a view of this document to make it instant to the user without the user having looked at it because that impacts their conversions. So AMP pre-rendering mode handles all of this for you. Other than the caching, but now moving on to the second pillar, which is the AMP cache, um, other than its obvious caching benefits like proximity, the AMP cache's primary contribution is that it only serves valid AMP documents. So everything that we just talked about that happens for a valid AMP document, i.e. pre-rendering mode, only is ensured by the AMP cache because it makes sure that as a platform you're only getting valid AMP documents for your user experience. Now let's dive into the viewer's role. For now, we'll talk specifically about Google Search's um, embedded web viewer, um, and we use this on Google's mobile web search. Uh, it's a set of sandbox iframes that the user can swipe horizontally between, so it's the one that's tied to the top story's carousel experience. Now, one key element of pre-rendering mode is that the viewer needs to tell the document that it should be in pre-rendering mode, i.e. when we think that the user is going to see this document, and it also needs to tell that document to get out of pre-rendering mode so we can load the rest of it, um, when the user has actually signaled that I'm looking at this document. Um, now what this requires is a viewer to document communication channel, and this is the post message API. Uh, I won't dive too deep into the post message API, but generically um, it supports communication across nested iframes without introducing the overhead of daisy chaining um, the messages between windows. Um, it's open sourced and you can check it out on our GitHub page. Now, Diving deep into the pre-rendering strategy itself, um, let's talk a little bit about the principles of pre-rendering that as a platform um, you want to respect. 
Number one, you want to pre-render an AMP document only if it's likely that the user is actually going to see it. Pretty obvious. Uh, number two, you want to pre-render AMP documents in the AMP pre-rendering mode. This takes care of a lot of the icky things that you would otherwise have to take care of as a developer yourself. Um, third, you want to start the pre-rendering after user interaction and after the end of a user animation of any. So in our case, it'd be um, someone actually uh, at the end of the search, page search results page load. Um, or if you're scrolling around in the AMP top stories carousel. Fourth, you want to pre-render at most one document at a time. Now, this makes sense because there's only going to, be, at any given time, there's only going to be one next document that the user is going to maybe want to see next. Um, fifth, you want to pre-render um, only for modern devices on really great connections. So this is to be respectful of users' data and bandwidth. And last, you want to be memory conscious and discard previously pre-rendered documents that are pretty unlikely to be seen anymore. All of this combines into a pre-rendering strategy. It's the most difficult part of any instant user experience is what to pre-render. And so I'll walk through a couple of naive examples of how Google Search uses these pre-rendering examples for our specific top stories carousel experience. In practice, um, at the end of the search results page load, we want to pre-render the first document associated with the first carousel item. Now, this is the first AMP that someone's potentially going to see. Um, if the user scrolls the carousel, then we pre-render the AMP document associated with the largest visible carousel item. Um, and we want to do that at the end of the scroll animation. Now, if the user clicks into an AMP document, so now I'm actually looking at this AMP document, um, we want to pre-render Let's call this document the nth document. Now we want to pre-render the n plus oneth document. So this, in the green box, the n plus oneth document is the one that the user has yet to see. But it's our guess as to which document the user is going to see next. Um, as you guys know, the top stories carousel, you can actually swipe horizontally between these in the viewer. Now, now that we're on this, now that we have this document pre-rendered, let's say the user inside the, inside the Google search viewer actually swipes from the nth document to the n plus oneth document. Our next best guess is that they're going to want to see the n plus tooth document. So we pre-render this new document. And of course, this also works in reverse. So if you want to swipe um, from right to left, then we pre-render the n minus two document, and so on and so forth. Um, in practice, that last bit, which is discarding um, pages that we don't think that the user is going to see anymore, uh, we do this for, I think, three pages. So we keep three pages pre-rendered. Moving on to how we built the AMP viewer. Well, actually, we built three of them. So we built one for mobile web, we built one for Android, and we built one on iOS. So we kind of talked about uh, mobile web, how it needs a post message API, et cetera. Um, and now we'll talk about some challenges that we faced and design decisions that we made um, on Android and iOS. So for Android, um, Probably some of the developers in here have faced some of these challenges, but you've got two choices. You choose to either use a web view or you can choose to use Chrome custom tabs with iframes. Um, now, the advantages of web views seem kind of obvious. Your app controls this web view, so you run your own JavaScript in the web view um, since you can inject it, and that's how you communicate with the AMP document. Um, it's the maximum flexibility, and you have complete control over your UX. Now, the other part of that is that then you might have to re-implement a lot of things that the browser already does well. Um, also, you have to think about user experience-wise, what happens, what's the difference in your user experience between AMPs and non-AMPs? So the other, the other choice, the other design route that you can go is Chrome custom tabs with iframes. Now, the pros of this are you get cookie sharing for free uh, because users don't need to log into sites that they've already signed into on Chrome. So you get the advantages of that. Um, Chrome Custom Tabs is an in-app browser that allows the app to pre-render the content in the browser, so you get pre-rendering. And there's one disadvantage, of course, is that Chrome takes control of the experience, so you might get a performance hit and you get a little bit more restricted UX because you're using Chrome Custom Tabs. So we chose to go with route number two. Um, it really takes care of a lot of the difficult parts of pre-rendering and a lot of the difficult parts of being a browser. On the iOS side, um, we actually did the other approach, which is um, while in AGSA we want the Chrome 
Uh, well, in the Android version, we went with the Chrome Custom Tabs implementation. On iOS, we went full native. So the significant change, instead of the AMP JavaScript managing all the AMP articles, um, the iOS app actually manages the AMP articles. And each WK web view um, renders one and only one AMP document. In terms of UI performance, obviously you get a lot of speed benefits. So we actually have great animations. And actually, you can use Xcode tooling. So that's what we did on iOS. So all in all, what makes an AMP-based experience really, really fast? It's these three pillars on how they contribute into an awesome pre-rendering experience. So the format attribute of the pre-rendering mode, the AMP cache's insurance that all the documents are valid and therefore you can actually have pre-rendering mode for your entire experience, and the pre-rendering strategy that you choose. Now you might be asking, how much faster did we actually make this experience? Well, we actually made it about 20 times faster. Um, reducing the median load time from a search result click to getting the user actually seeing the page to less than a second. Um, that means that in many, many, many cases, we've achieved instant. And as you guys build your user experiences, uh, your AMP-based user experiences, think about your pre-rendering strategy um, and how that works with your UX. And we hope that you can also achieve instant AMP experiences. Thank you.